Over 8.7 million tons of copper scrap are recycled every year. That's enough to build over 1,500 Statues of Liberty. But how does old wiring, plumbing, and electronics transform into pure, reusable copper? From collection to melting, this is how over 30,000 pounds of copper are recycled each minute in a factory. Copper is everywhere, inside of your phone, running through the walls of your house, powering your appliances, and even bringing you fresh water. It's one of the most useful metals in the world, and we've been using it for over 11,000 years. Why? because copper is an incredible conductor of electricity and heat, making it essential for everything from high-tech electronics to simple plumbing pipes. But here's something even more impressive. Copper never wears out. Unlike other materials that degrade over time, copper can be recycled over and over without losing any of its quality. That means the same piece of copper that was used in an ancient tool thousands of years ago could still be in circulation today, now powering a modern city. So, how does this endless recycling process work? Let's take a trip inside the factories that turn piles of old, discarded copper into brand new high quality metal. Of course, it all starts with collection. But it's not as simple as just gathering old copper and tossing it into a machine. Every day, tons of scrap copper are collected from all kinds of sources. Demolished buildings, old vehicles, broken electronics, and outdated plumbing. Copper is found in electric motors, transformers, circuit boards, and even air conditioning units. So when these items reach the end of their life, their valuable copper components are removed and set aside for recycling. This collection isn't random. Electricians, plumbers, and demolition workers all play a part in saving copper from landfills because they know just how valuable it is. And they're right. A single 100-pound bundle of scrap copper can bring in anywhere from $100 to $400 at a recycling yard, depending on how pure it is. This fluctuating price comes from copper's massive demand. It's needed in everything from construction and power grids to electric vehicles and wind turbines. That's why recycling copper isn't just good for the environment. It's a huge global industry that saves billions of dollars every year while keeping the essential metal in circulation. At the scrapyard, the first big step in copper recycling begins, sorting. Copper comes in many different forms, and not all copper is created equal. Electrical wiring, for example, might look the same at first glance, but the amount of pure copper inside varies. Some wires are thick and nearly solid copper, while others are thinly coated with insulation or mixed with aluminum. Meanwhile, solid copper pieces like pipes, old machinery parts, and heat exchangers need to be separated by grade, since even tiny impurities can affect the metal's conductivity and strength. That's a big deal for industries that rely on ultra-pure copper for power lines, computer chips, and high-performance electrical components. To speed up this process, factories use high-tech sorting machines. One of the first steps is magnetic separation, which removes any steel or iron that might be mixed in. Copper itself isn't magnetic, so these metals can be easily pulled out before they reach the next stage. Another method, called eddy current sorting, takes things even further. This system uses powerful magnetic fields that create electric currents in the metal, forcing copper and aluminum to repel away from each other so that they can be sorted automatically. Once everything is properly sorted, it's time for the next step, shredding. This is where copper scrap is broken down into smaller, more manageable pieces. Recycling plants use massive industrial shredders equipped with razor-sharp rotating blades that can cut through wires, pipes, motors, and even entire radiators in just seconds. These machines are so powerful that some can handle over 3,000 kilograms, which is more than 6,600 pounds, of copper per hour. Before the shredded copper moves forward, it often goes through one more refining step, granulation and separation. This is where the copper is broken down even further into tiny granules, making it even easier to melt. But there's still some leftover insulation, plastic coatings, or other materials mixed in, and they need to be removed. That's where dry separation comes in. These high-tech machines use air separators and vibrating tables to sort out anything that isn't pure copper. Air separators work by blowing a strong stream of air through the granules, lifting away any lightweight materials like plastic while the heavier copper falls through. Vibrating tables, on the other hand, use controlled shaking to separate materials by density, ensuring that only clean, high-purity copper moves forward. By the time the process is done, the copper is free of contaminants and ready for the most intense step yet, melting. 
They're fed into massive industrial furnaces that reach temperatures over 1000 degrees Celsius, hot enough to turn solid metal into a glowing liquid state. To put that into perspective, that's nearly twice as hot as molten lava. Some of the largest copper recycling furnaces in the world can process hundreds of tons at a time, keeping up with the never-ending demand for copper. But melting isn't just about turning solid metal into liquid, it's also about purification. Even after all the sorting and shredding, tiny bits of insulation, rubber, and other metals may still be mixed in. As the copper melts, these unwanted materials float to the surface, forming a layer of slag. Workers then skim off this waste, leaving behind cleaner copper. Some factories take it a step further by injecting oxygen into the furnace, which burns off remaining impurities and leaves the molten copper nearly pure. At this point, the copper is almost pure, but not quite. That's where electrolysis comes in, a process that takes recycling to the next level, ensuring that the copper meets the highest industry standards for conductivity and strength. This step happens in massive electrolytic tanks, where slabs of impure copper, called blister copper, are submerged in a solution of copper sulfate and sulfuric acid. Alongside them, thin sheets of pure copper foil act as the collection points, or cathodes. Then, when an electric current is passed through the solution, something incredible happens. Copper atoms leave the impure slabs, dissolve into the liquid, and then reattach themselves to the pure copper sheets in perfect uniform layers. This process takes about one or two weeks, but the result is totally worth it. Each sheet grows into a solid 300-pound slab of 99.9% .9 pure copper. That's the highest level of purity achievable through recycling, making it just as good as freshly mined copper. But the real bonus of electrolysis? It doesn't just recover copper. As the impurities separate, tiny amounts of gold, silver, and nickel sink to the bottom of the tank, forming what's known as anode sludge. This sludge is collected and processed separately to extract these valuable metals, an extra benefit that makes copper recycling even more profitable and sustainable. Once the copper is fully refined, it needs to take on a solid form before it can be reused again. Factories pour the molten metal into molds, shaping it into ingots or billets, large blocks of pure copper that are easy to transport and process. To cool them quickly and maintain their strength, high-pressure water jets blast the metal, solidifying it in seconds. This rapid cooling keeps the copper's structure intact, ensuring it remains strong and durable for its next life cycle. But these solid blocks aren't the final product. They're just the starting point for the next big transformation, extrusion and fabrication. In this stage, copper ingots are reheated and pushed through extrusion dies, stretching them into long, continuous shapes like wires, tubes, and sheets. This is how we get the copper pipes used in plumbing, the wiring that powers homes and electronics, and the thin copper sheets used in renewable energy systems. Copper's incredible flexibility means it can be bent, shaped, and customized into thousands of different forms. Whether it's being used in electrical grids, cars, or high-tech gadgets, recycled copper is just as valuable as newly mined copper. Only it comes with fewer environmental costs. Recycling copper isn't just smart, it's essential. It takes 85% less energy than mining new copper, saving resources while keeping millions of tons in circulation. In fact, two-thirds of all copper ever mined is still being used today, thanks to efficient recycling. Beyond saving money, it cuts pollution in a big way. Every ton of recycled copper prevents 15 metric tons of CO2 emissions, reducing the need for destructive mining. In the US alone, copper recycling eliminates 186 million metric tons of CO2 annually. Globally, 8.7 million tons of copper scrap are recycled each year keeping valuable materials from going to waste. And the process keeps getting better. Take the Super Strip machine, which removes plastic insulation from copper wiring without burning it. Older methods wasted 30% of the copper's weight and released toxic fumes. This new tech preserves every bit of copper while keeping the air clean. As recycling plants handle more electronic waste, they're recovering copper from old phones, computers, and even electric vehicle batteries. Advanced shredders and separators extract copper along with gold, silver, tin, and nickel, making sure nothing valuable is lost. But not all copper is pure. Some is mixed with lead, tin, or zinc, which can't be used in high-tech applications. To fix this, factories melt and refine these alloys, turning them into durable materials for pipes, machinery, and even musical instruments. 
Even heavily contaminated copper gets purified and reused, keeping waste to a minimum. Factories also work to cut emissions and pollution from the recycling process itself. High-tech filtration systems and scrubbers trap harmful fumes, making the process cleaner and safer. And with global demand for copper skyrocketing, recycling is more crucial than ever. By 2030, e-waste alone is expected to hit 74 million metric tons per year. Recovering the copper inside will help industries grow sustainably without draining natural resources. Right now, factories around the world recycle over 30,000 tons of copper every single minute. That's an entire semi-truck's worth of metal processed in just 60 seconds. It's a perfect example of how recycling isn't just about reducing waste, it's about using what we already have in the smartest way possible. And that's how over 30,000 pounds of copper are recycled every minute, giving it endless new uses while saving energy and reducing waste. Which part of this process surprised you the most? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this behind the scenes look, be sure to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more fascinating facts.